Sunny, little wildfire smoke leaking in, causing some haze with a high of 92. Partly cloudy and 70 right now. Your next news update is at 8. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. Insert Democrat Socialist here. Runs the Democratic House law for 30 plus years of running. He's promising this and he's stealing that. Where can you get that kind of money? He's using your house like his own piggy bank, gang, 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 gang. You ought to know by now. You can pay off your house here in Illinois. But you can never keep up with the taxes. Oh, how it's always been the plan to have a taxpayer pay, no doubt. Not a matter of if anymore, but when you're moving out. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. That uh, theme music means it's time for our weekly confab with Ted Dabrowski, president of wirepoints.org, all things Illinois policy related. And boy, what, what do we have here? This can't be. What? Our very own Governor Jelly Belly What's he doing caused now? celeb among new Bolsheviks in Illinois is uh, bringing up the rear. In swing states, among new Bolsheviks in those swing states, when the question is, who should be Reparation H's running mate? In Arizona, he gets two-tenths of a percent. Uh Uh-oh. In Georgia, he's last in every poll. In in, uh, Georgia, he gets 2.4 percent. Ruh-roh. Bernie Sanders, 21 percent. Weeds. Uh, Pennsylvania, obviously Shapiro, he gets half a percent in Pennsylvania. In Wisconsin, he gets 4.1%, still in last. In Michigan, he gets 1.1%, also last. I I guess, as I said, um, Governor Pritzker. Who? This uh, governor, yeah. I know, because people, they knew who our mayor was, but they didn't know who our governor was. Back in 2020, when I was traveling a lot of places. Oh, well, well, he's, 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 he's hosting the DNC. Maybe, maybe uh, it's just that uh, our governor, Jelly Belly, there, this uh, smarmy, entitled, humorless, mm-hmm. Brock sized candy ass tub of goo of a governor just isn't that popular. But he tried so hard. Remember, he had speaking engagements in Florida. He went, New New Hampshire. Hampshire. Yeah. went to New oh, Hampshire. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. With my list. He, he went right after. Uh, he went right after Governor Ron DeSantis. He was he was right there competing with the Eva Peron of East Lansing and Gavin Newsom and uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Governor. Um, um, now you've made me. Oh. Oh my, what, my my what's my my hand of uh, Patrick Bateman, Governor Patrick Bateman of California. Patrick. Huh. What happened? I'm so surprised. I, 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 0.2% in Arizona. Wow. They're going to have to, hey, uh, new Bolsheviks here in Illinois, you're going to have to do more to prop up your boy. For more on this, Ted Dabrowski, president of wirepoints.org, joins us. Ted, what's going on? Good morning, there? Dan. Good morning, Amy. I, I don't understand. Is it Wisconsin? People certainly know who uh, Jelly Belly is in Wisconsin. He has a vacation home there. He spends millions of dollars on he's property. Got a, he's got a big spread in, in Lake Geneva, um, and I, you know, a house in addition to the food. And, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just the sort of, like, they, the uh, cheese heads have a little bit more common sense than uh, Illinoisans when it comes to seeing him for the spalding he really is behind the, you know, polish of his suit and combed hair. Yeah, you know when when uh, Emerson Polling came out with this this poll, I was I was curious because you know they they, they announced that he was at the bottom, and uh, and it's pretty much the same thing among all registered voters. Uh, he he didn't come in last place uh, in uh, which one was that Wisconsin, but he came in next to last place. But he was in last. No, place. that's the place. He's behind Cooper in Wisconsin too. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, but among 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 all registered voters, then he he was. Uh, which is down. We, we ran the numbers, so we ran both for Democratic voters and for. Oh, I see. Um, I see. Right, and so even within his own party, he fin- that, that's where he finished last among everybody. Right. Uh, 
And so, you know, it's such a, wow, such a brutal hit to a guy who, you know, he's, he's got his Think Big campaign. He's been spending money in Ohio on, on, on the abortion cause. He, you know, of course, he's given money in, in Wisconsin to, to judges there to, to support the abortion cause. He, is, he has made it sound, and, you know, he even had me thinking that he would maybe poll decently. Uh, but, man, you know, in Arizona, among the, among the Democrats, right, 0.2 percent of the vote is almost like he didn't exist. Well, um, yeah. Um, there's yeah. no, there's no question about that, but you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, we'll take your money flounder, but it doesn't mean you get to run the, the, the group. Right. Well, and it's, yeah, that's very true. And that's what he's got. And, you know, this is one of, one of the big issues that we pointed out in our piece that we wrote is that, you know, part of it is, is that, you know, we, well, we didn't know how popular or unpopular he is, but, uh, you know, if you think about Illinois, people might say, well, yeah, but he's done really well in Illinois. And, you know, the, the comeback to that is, well, you know, he bought both, both of his elections here. You know, he spent $170 million on each election uh, to buy it. And, you know, he even, he even paid uh, $35 million for Bar- Darren Bailey to get to, to win on, on the Republican side. So he it's hard to know who this guy is, but uh, this poll is really damning for him. And whatever, whatever you know, national ambitions he has, he's, he's going to have to rethink things a little bit well, because uh, he's not as big as he thinks he is. Can he reinduce, reintroduce himself at the DNC convention? Do we know what slot he has yet to speak? Um, I, I'm not aware of exactly what he has on that, and, and and of course you can you can bet he's going to try to have a, a, a big position. Um, but you know I think the other part that we have to introduce is that you know maybe he's a little too extreme even for his own party. Maybe I, I don't know. That's that's hard to say these days. But, I don't uh, I don't know that he's too extreme for his own party. Yeah. I just don't think he's uh, particularly attractive in with so many respects. I mean you know I mean and it doesn't mean that you can't ultimately you know, by hook or by crook, rise to the top. Look at Kamala Harris. She's sure. a, she's a, also had terrible numbers for her and the entirety of her career. But, you know, you navigate uh, through uh, a one party state the way that she did. That's like the way that Pritzker did. And, you know, you get a couple of breaks and hey, look, you're the presidential nominee. So it's still possible to be otherwise distasteful to even look at, much less listen to. And uh, and make it. But uh, it's certainly um, yeah, it's certainly got to be a bit of a bit of a, a shot to his ego to, to 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 know that his party faithful convening in Chicago in a few weeks don't find him uh, particularly interesting. No, you know, and, and one of the arguments would be, well, you know, he's not well known, you know, Arizona, that's far away. But, you know, guys like Bashir, you know, and Whitmer and others did, did a lot better than Pritzker. They weren't in last. He was. So I think that's that's the big the big difference. And, uh, you know, what's interesting also is that Cooper, has, I think what I heard is he's announced that he's going to step out of consideration. Well, he finished pretty much next to, next to last with, uh, with Pritzker. So, well, that's a little yeah. bit different because I think people don't know who he is as much from North Carolina, but, but I mean, and Pritz- Whitmer yesterday said, but, she's but he still did better. Yeah, yeah no, I, right, better. right, yeah. right, right. So how much of his own money do we know? Did he spend to get the DNC here in Chicago? I, I, I don't know that either. I, I know. Uh, I don't know. I just know that a lot of corporations are, are paying up right now to, to help out. But uh, I don't know that. number. Uh, I, I'm more interested in how much of our money he's spending oh, yeah. um, or your sure. money. Now I'm not an only resident. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't have to pay taxes. Uh, and Prisker said, it's, brag over Prisker there. said it's OK. He said it's OK. I don't have to pay taxes. I'm a Florida resident. He agrees. Uh, State of Illinois has already paid uh, Goshen, that uh, Chinese communist backed energy battery company that's uh, scheduled to locate in Mantino, build a facility there, already paid, the state has already paid $125 million on the $500 plus million dollar subsidy. Uh, your uh, colleague Mark Lennon over at uh, WirePoints reminding us that if the project is finished, because $125 million was just to secure the land, but if the project is finished and stays in operation between federal and state subsidies, Goshen will be paid four times its costs which is just astounding, um, astounding success for a Chinese communist back company when it comes to rent seeking in this country. Um, but but what you know, I heard Jeannie Ives's uh, editorial before you joined us. And there is some uh, movement in opposition that looks like it's not a fait accompli that uh, that facility gets built in Mantino. Well, you know, it, it's not. There's a there's a lot of pushback. I, and I, uh, I happen to be in with Jeannie uh, in Michigan. Last week, I actually went to the uh, Darren LaHood and uh, Congressman Mullinar, uh, what do you want to call it, summit to talk about about uh, the, the Goshen plant in Michigan that's being opposed. And they've, they've, I tell you what, it is, I'm so fired up when I was there because you got a crowd that, you know, they fired all five 
uh, trustees that had, had um, approved the Goshen deal and, and put on a whole new group of, uh, of uh, members. And uh, it's great to see the fight and the pushback. And it was a really good, well done, well done uh, summit or panel. And uh, Congressman LaHood was great. But uh, yeah, you know, there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of, of uh, obstacles that, that are being put up to uh, to Goshen. Uh, you know, they're they're making sure they're trying to make sure that the Goshen can't put or or these Chinese plants can't build right next to military facilities. Um, there's uh, you know, the, the Defense Department has said we will not buy Goshen batteries. There's a lot of strikes against Goshen. Uh, they've also found that. Uh, the, the Goshen and cattle, which is another group from China, are using slave labor, uh, the Uyghurs. So uh, all these uh, obstacles are coming up, and uh, let's see if, uh, if it's enough to stop this. You know, it's $8 billion in potential subsidies from the federal and state government for a $2 billion plant. Uh, it's, it's absurd, crazy, and, and I, I don't know what else to say about it. Slave labor. Huh. Boy, that's, that's an odd uh, company to align with here and subsidize when— the power structure in this state is all about the working man and raising the minimum wage and, uh, you know, a, mm-hmm. um, a, 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 um, a, 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 a credible, you know, guarantee for universal basic income, you know, living, living income that's, per, that's, uh, backed by the government. And yet here they are in bed with, you know, communist Chinese slave traders. Well, Shocking. well that, yeah, that's a big one. And the other part is of course that, you know, this current uh, administration, you're talking about you know, Lloyd Austin and Blinken and Christopher Ray, they're all very obsessed and worried about China's global espionage campaign. And yet here they are, that same administration is approving all these subsidies to, um, to a company that's backed by China and has you know, very strong ties to the CCP. Uh, you know, again, back to the hypocrisy we're so used to. Now, you know, the, the $500 million uh, of state subsidies to Goshen – taxpayer dollars to Goshen didn't bother me as much because I, I understand from Governor Pritzker that we're flush with cash because Illinois is a is an economic dynamo and we're growing we're gaining population but then I see some of this um, agit prop that you're putting out at wire points alleging uh, contrary to what the governor said that uh, over the last uh, two decades we've lost about 700 billion dollars in adjusted gross income which is you know, that's that's a good chunk of change. Uh, why are you conjuring up this information to, um, you know, be uh, a contrarian to the official position from the governor? Everything is fine. No problems. No, you know, it's it's just so easy. You know, the IRS just lays out the data. They, you know, they know where people are moving to. And uh, the latest the latest year we lost, you know, when, when we take the people who moved in and the people who moved out, uh, we lost a net ten billion in adjusted gross income. That's taxable taxable income that we could have taxed. Uh, that's like four hundred million dollars just from that loss alone on income taxes, and that's just for that year. But when you consider that the year before we lost eleven billion dollars, and the year before that we lost nine billion dollars, when you start to accumulate all those losses, you realize that today, if you look back at the last twenty years and just say, hey, if we just held steady on population and income, we'd have three and a half billion more dollars in 2022, in the 2022 budget to fund all kinds of stuff or to lower taxes or to get people relief. Uh, but instead, we're losing these people, we're losing the income, and of course, it's destructive to the tax base. Nobody wants to talk about that, but it's, uh, it's, it's a huge driver of why we're in such a mess. Uh, somebody needs to investigate the IRS for being part of this conspiracy to embarrass Governor Pritzker with their data. Yeah, that's clearly what's going on. They're, they're working with U-Haul and, and United Van Lines. Yes, it's, oh, a, it's, it's, yeah, it's a vast right wing. It's another vast right wing conspiracy. Go. They're always afoot. Um, do we have any, I guess we don't because I've, I've read uh, some of the uh, reporting on this. I guess we don't have a handle too on who exactly, speaking of who's paying, who's paying for the DNC. We don't really have a handle on that. I know you, you mentioned he's getting some companies to pony up for it, but we don't have a handle how much uh, Chicago, not that they care, Chicago, Illinois taxpayers are on the hook for with respect to that, do we? No, I, I, I don't know, and I, I haven't looked at it, but uh, you, know, you, you can bet we are in some way. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Now, I know that there's, there's big money being spent by like some of the corporations, you know, the, the airline companies and all that who, who benefit from more business, um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, but it's worth looking into, so we'll, we'll take a look for that. And why are we having two locations, McCormick Place and United Center? 
That I don't know either. That's right. It's normally in one house. You got to spread the wealth. Probably what it is, right? Spread the wealth. Yeah, absolutely. It's, more road closures for people. Yay, I mean, look, more you know, of an inconvenience. Well, you got you got to have, yeah, you, know, you got to you know to, to break up some of the uh, genocide Joe and Kamala protesters that are going to descend. By the way, they're going to descend. They they're oh, yeah. saber rattling right now too. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And if uh, and if Police Chief uh, Snelling lives up to his promise for mass arrests, if there is uh, mass law breaking, we'll see. That's why we're going to save that you know, soundbite. Something, something, something tells me I think Snelling would like to do a good job. I, I hope they let him. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. But uh, I, I don't. Know, I have a little bit of positive feel about him, but that doesn't mean he's in control, and that doesn't mean he gets to to call the shots. So that's yeah. a fair point. And no time off for police officers. I mean, Lollapalooza starts this Thursday. Then you have a week break, and then the DNC comes. And then it's all hands on deck. Well, it's the summer of what? Where, what summer are we on now? We've, we've had the chaos. summer of love. Thought... We've had the summer of joy. Oh, the summer of gimme dat. Oh, the summer of gimme. Uh, Ted Dabrowski, president of WirePoints.org. All things Illinois policy related. Thanks, Ted. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey dot pro answer line. The stories you need to know to start your day. This is Chicago's morning answer on AM five sixty. The answer. As everyone can tell, we're living in turbulent times. During times of uncertainty like World War II and 9-11, people have often turned to God. In times like these, Fox Valley Coins in Naperville, Illinois reminds all Americans of the ancient promise found in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face,